Hey everybody! So if you saw my Whole Foods haul yesterday, you know that my parents are coming over for dinner tonight and I'm planning on making filet with a red wine sauce with mushrooms and roasted garlic and also some corn on the cob that we're going to do outside on the grill and I'm going to bring you along uh, through that process in today's Cook Nook. It's about an hour and a half before I'm going to want to cook, the, cook these steaks so I pulled them out of the fridge and I've got them uh, coated on both sides with kosher salt. Now I'm going to rinse all that so salt off before I start cooking. It's just sort of a dry brine. It draws a lot of the moisture out of the steak now, which, well, it draws the water out. The steak will still be juicy when we cook it, but the juiciness doesn't come from the water. It comes from the steaky parts of the steak. And getting the water out makes it so that when I add salt later for seasoning, it won't draw the water out and then the steak gets more of a crusty kind of thing instead of more of a steaming kind of thing. I think it also helps tenderize a bit. Um, I've read that this is a good technique. I'm not sure I understand all of the chemistry. Uh, but don't worry, the salt will get rinsed off. So for this recipe, I like to use roasted garlic in my sauce. So I've got my heads of garlic with the tops chopped off here in my Pyrex dish, uh, drizzled with just a bit of olive oil and just a dash of salt on top. Now I'm going to cover this with tin foil and put it in a 400 degree oven for about one hour. So there's my garlic in the oven and yes that was five heads of garlic for a dish that's going to serve four people which is quite a bit but um, that's just how we roll in this house. We love our garlic. You do not have to use this much garlic. Uh, use only as much garlic as you want. <clears throat> so I've got my four ears of corn here that I'm going to do on the grill. I think uh, grilling with the husk on is a fantastic way to prepare corn comes out with a great flavor. Uh, the trick is just not letting anything burn and these little frizzy guys at the top can burn easily so to prepare it for the grill what you want to do is pull all of this off that you can and this one was super easy sometimes you have to dig in a little bit to be able to get it but that was real easy. Pull this off and also pull these stray um, husks off and then what I'm going to do is soak this in water I think at least half an hour is good. I'll probably have them soaking for for a good hour and then uh, that'll help them uh, not burn when you throw them on the grill. And there's the corn after I've removed all of the uh, stray husk and frizzy bits. So I found a foil pan that the corn um, fit in, you know, that was deep enough. So I filled it with water and now I'm using this Pyrex dish to keep the corn from floating to the top. And I'll let it sit like that for about an hour till we're ready to grill. So now I've also got some cherry wood chips here that I'm soaking in water in a foil pan. I don't always do this, but I figure because we've got the video cameras out, I might as well show off the grill that has a cool little combo box where I can put some wood in there. And uh, I happen to have a lot of cherry wood left over from last season when I overbought a little. So I figured why not add a little cherry wood smoke to the grill that we're, or to the corn that we're going to do out on the grill. Uh, so I've got that soaking in water now so it doesn't flare up too quickly. So here are my mushrooms in a strainer after I just spent several minutes uh, running cold water over them and rubbing them with my hands to make sure we get all the dirt off. Mushrooms can come with a bunch of dirt on them so never forget to rinse thoroughly. So for this preparation I like to remove the, the stems of the mushrooms uh, which is a pretty simple process. They just pop off very easily. Uh, these are obviously edible but they're not nearly as tender and uh, for the way I'm doing them today I like to remove these so I'm gonna get that done now before my guests arrive. Alright so here are my steaks um, you saw the salt brine earlier they sat in that salt for about an hour and a half and then I rinsed it all off literally just put them under running cold water rinse it off uh, pat them dry with a paper towel and I'm about ready to cook them so now I've just given a light sprinkle of salt and pepper on each side Okay, so you guys saw these cherry wood chips before when they were soaking in water. What I've done is I poured them in a strainer to get all the water out. And then when it was empty, I poked several holes in the bottom of my tin foil. And now I'm going to put them in my grill. Uh, this is sort of a cool feature of this grill that I've got. Uh, here we go. So I've been preheating it for a while at medium heat uh, with the gas on. But it's got this drawer. I don't know if you can see. You can see the flames underneath and there's this drawer that's right above the flames and if you wanted you could do a fire that was all charcoal or all wood. There's different kind of inserts here that you can put in um, to make it less, uh, 
to make the gap smaller. But what I'm doing is just putting this pan of soaked cherry wood chips on top and I'm going to slide it in there when I put the uh, camera down and these will just add a nice gentle smokiness to the corn. So I just uh, did a light spray of uh, cooking oil onto the grilling surface and now I'm adding the corn that I recently removed from the water and this will take about 20 minutes on a medium heat and you want to make sure you turn them every five minutes or so. There we go. All right, so I've got just a little bit of olive oil in my pan on relatively high heat. I've got it on five and I've let it preheat nicely and now I'm going to add my fillet. And that is the sound that we love to hear. Now, I highly recommend a non-non-stick pan if you're doing this recipe. Uh, you, what we're gonna do is deglaze this pan with red wine later and all of the crusty, steaky goodness that's left behind by the cooking really adds a lot of flavor to the sauce. Um, so it depends on how thick your steaks, how long this is going to take. Um, it's going to be probably four or five minutes a side. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So if, if you notice, I actually have four fillets of fairly different sizes here. I had intended to get this giant one on there first for a couple minutes and then add that one and then that one and then that one, but I sillily added them all at once. So I'm just going to take this small one off first and try to make sure they all end up at the same temperature. By the way, here's the garlic after it roasted in the oven. I ended up having it in there for almost an hour and 20 minutes. After about 50 minutes, I just check it every 10 minutes because you don't want it to get over roasted. It gets crusty and hard. You want it to be nice and soft and this just kind of gentle brown color, which is what we've got going on. So this is never an extremely graceful process, but I'm going to show you how I harvest the roasted garlic. I've, I've let, this has been out of the oven for a good 15 minutes, so it's not quite so hot. And I take a paper towel and fold it over once or twice and then just pinch the garlic kind of from the sides and the bottom and squeeze it all out onto this plate. Let's see if I can do it so you can see. Uh, sometimes you get a few pieces of, you know, the garlic uh, exterior in there, but that came out reasonably well. Let's grab that guy and uh, some beautiful garlic. And that's what it looks like once you get all five heads harvested. All right, so I got a few things going on, but I think it's been five or seven minutes uh, since I put this on so I'm just gonna give the corn a quick turn and they're looking pretty good so it looks like it's a lot hotter back here so I'm just doing a quick little rotation and I you know I, I should have put the wood on a little sooner it's not quite smoking yet but it'll kick into gear in a minute so these are the mushrooms with the stems removed and what I like to do is just chop them all in half um, it's not that interesting you just chop them in half. I'm not quite sure if that's getting in the can. There you go. So I'm gonna chop all these up. So it's been it's been close to five minutes for these steaks. I think the smallest ones are ready to be flipped anyway. Got a nice uh, nice browning going on. Let's see. Now this one is super thick. I'm gonna give that one another minute. This one's a bit thinner. I'm gonna flip that one. Give these other two another. Give those other two another minute or two. All right, so I gave these fat ones another couple minutes, and now I'm going to flip them, too. Mm, looking very good. So my father was very gracious and brought over some wine for us. We're using this Raven wine, which is a, a wine that he had put together for the Raven Foundation as the cooking wine for the sauce. And I don't know how to pronounce Gaja. that. Say it again. Gaja is the vineyard. Gaja? Yeah. Cameron Sionda is the oh, is the style. style. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, so tell us about that wine. Well, it's from Italy. It's from the Antonori family. And uh, Oh, Antonori family. That sounds familiar. From uh, Pepoli, yes. we were drinking those. We've had it before, Pepoli. And, uh, oh, we had this one there? Not this specific one, but oh. the Gaja family. Cool. And this is just another version that's wonderful. So we'll enjoy it very much. And... The Raven Foundation wine is uh, Napa Valley Cabernet, 
Mm -hmm. And the way that works is you buy a barrel's worth of wine before the season. They grow right. the grapes and you work with the vintner to actually create the, the wine as it's in the barrel. Yeah. And this is uh, from a company called St. George, which uh, is a very lovely grape. So Very cool. It should be great. Thanks, Ed. So my smallest steak is just at about 110, 111. Uh, I'm going to want it to be close to 120 when I take it off. The temp will rise a little bit after I uh, tent it in tin foil, uh, and it'll it'll rest while I'm reducing the red wine sauce. Um, but you know we like rare steak in this family, and I think 120 is pretty much the perfect temperature to take it off the heat if you're looking for a warm red center. Not sure how well it comes up on the camera, but the wood chips are actually smoking now and it just smells fantastic. So I just wanted to get you guys a view of this. I've been turning the corn every five minutes or so. So I just pulled my two smaller steaks off and I'm about to cover them in tin foil. I just wanted to show you this pan and see all that crusty goodness on the bottom. Once I get these other two steaks out, I'm going to add the wine. It's going to deglaze that pan, pan and just create some very, very nice flavors. So I've got my mushroom pan over medium heat. I just added a tiny bit of olive oil to cover the bottom of the pan and then go the mushrooms. I learned that you don't want to season your mushrooms, especially with salt, until after they cook down a bit. Otherwise it'll pull so much moisture out of the mushrooms that you'll get a lot of uh, kind of water at the bottom of your pan. Just wanted to get a shot of the smoke coming out of the grill now. That's what we like to see. That hopefully that's not the corn burning, it's just the, the wood smoking. Oh God, that smells great. So these are looking pretty close to done. I think we're gonna pull them off. Now, the mushrooms are sticking to the pan just a tiny bit more than I wanted them to, so I added another splash of olive oil. We do want the mushrooms to stick to the pan a bit. We're gonna deglaze this one too, and that'll add some flavor. We wanna get that, get them cooked down in that way, but it was just a little too much, so I added a little extra olive oil. All right, so I pulled my last two steaks out. I've still got my pan on relatively high heat. I've got the better part of a cup of wine here, maybe three quarters of a cup. And here we go. Oh, gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Now I'm going to let this simmer because we want it to reduce down. It'll take at least 10 minutes, maybe 15. Mm -hmm. So I turned my heat all the way up to high to get the simmer going. And I've just been using my flat, um, what do we call this? Spatula. Is that a spatula when it's wooden? Yeah. I've been using my flat spatula to just get the crusty bits off the bottom of the pan to make sure they get incorporated into the red wine. Oh, actually, wait, no, stay, now will you shoot this one? Mm -hmm. So the mushrooms have been cooking for several minutes now, and, you know, I used to always think that chefs were just showing off when they did stuff like this, but I've actually realized that th there's a reason why they do that. It Instead of pushing the mushrooms around with my spatula and getting just some kind of a random turn, when, when you do that flip, you always move you know, mushrooms evenly from one end to the other and you get a more even cook that way. I wasn't in love with the quantity of sauce that was manifesting here, so I just added several additional glugs of wine um, to make there be more sauce. Almost forgot that we do want to add some butter to the sauce. We'll call that a tablespoon, more or less. Slightly more, perhaps. So the mushrooms are about halfway done cooking down, I'd say. You can see all the liquid that's accumulating at the bottom of the pan. And now I'm going to add my roasted garlic. So it's my mother is graciously volunteering to be the camera woman. And what do you think? Should, should we add it all? We're at least going to add that much. Oh, yeah. I mean, go for it, right? I am Italian. Yeah. I was trying to tell them that in, in your family, you know, it takes a lot of garlic to get there. <laughs> So now I'm just going to stir this around and let it incorporate, and in a minute I'm going to add a bit of salt and pepper too. So I just added three or four turns of salt from my salt grinder and five or six turns of pepper. And these mushrooms are looking very happy. So this is what the mushrooms and red wine look like now that we're ready to serve. 
Here's Jennifer filming my coconut. <laughs> <laughs> got the corn, got the steaks, and the mushrooms. So we're just having our first bites, but my mother seems pleased. That's, that's what we want to see. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone got into the corn yet, but the mm -mm. steaks are looking good. Mm. The mushrooms and the sauce came out well. Wait, wait. Okay, tell us about the corn. <laughs> it's very sweet, and the texture is just right. You didn't mush it up or anything. Oh, fantastic. It's are you getting any of the grilly smokiness? Yes, and it's juicy. Nice. You know, I was, mm. honestly, mm -hmm. I, I looked at the corn, I said, there's no way it's good. I looked around at all the other vegetables. I was going to do squash, and mm. I thought, it feels like summer, let's do some corn. Peeled it back, it looked okay. Did it say where they, it was from? Mm. If it did, I didn't see You it. didn't notice. Oh, it's yeah. excellent. It's certainly not Illinois corn. <laughs> Probably not. Not much we know. Yeah. Fantastic. Wow, so I just had to get a shot of the clean plates because it's a beautiful thing to a chef. I always, um, I love watching Restaurant Impossible with Robert Irvine where he does uh, overhauls of restaurants and mm -hmm. chefs are used to, chefs are used to getting all of their food sent back all the time. Oh. And then they finally have a night after Robert helps redo the kitchen where all mm. the plates are coming back empty and it's extremely satisfying. And I feel like that at the moment. So yay. Yay.